Good morning. So that's not really realistic, is it? The angelic essence, also known as the ethereal, was founded by a man named John Kitchener, and it's part of his seven essence system. He created a company called the Personal Style Consultants and has been typing people from about the 60s, but in the 80s he created his essence system. And one of those essence options, the most rare in fact, is the angelic essence. Now, Harriet McJimsey was actually the first person to take the yin and yang concept and apply it to physical traits of the body. A lot was happening in the 80s. We have Kibbe creating his 13 body image identity system. We have Kitchener creating his seven essence identity system. So what's the difference? So Kibbe focuses more on the body and the silhouette and how fabric drapes over the silhouette. Kitchener focuses more on the face. And it's about, I would say, 80% face, 20 to 15% body. Now, McJimsey and Kibbe and Kitchener all have certain families in common. They all have dramatics, naturals, classics, gamines, and romantics. Now, McJimsey also had the ingenue category, which Kitchener did include into his system. But what is uniquely Kitchener is the angelic essence. So moving forward in this video, I may be using angelic and ethereal interchangeably. They are essentially the same thing. So Kitchener actually views the yin and yang system as more of a circle. And we can see right here that we have classics right here in the middle. That is because they are the most blended of yin and yang. They don't have outwardly yang, they don't have outwardly yin features all blended together. And here we see where angelic falls on the spectrum. You can see that it's directly opposite from dramatics. While they share similar physical traits to a certain degree, we're going to talk about the difference between the two of them. So the angelic essence is the most yin in Kitchener's system, and it also has an ethereal essence quality about it. And the dramatic has the most yang in the essence system. It's considered theatrical yang. So Kitchener believes that you are actually not just one essence, that you can be a blend of all of these. And you can actually have up to all seven. However, if you're on a self journey, I suggest that you start with three essences to test them out. But if you're getting professionally typed by Kitchener, by all means, he can tell you exactly what you are. So the angelic essence is actually the most rare of essences. Hello. Let's get into what it actually means. So the angelic essence is described as otherworldly. They almost look mystical or like goddesses, fairies, mermaids, sirens. They don't look of this time or place. So the angelic essence has elongated yin, and this can be seen as a soft elongated S. So it's long, it's narrow, and it's soft. Now I'm going to go over some physical traits, but remember these are just general guidelines. So if you don't have exactly these physical traits, you can still have an angelic essence. So the angelic essence tends to be tall and narrow and sometimes even waif-like. They also tend to have oval shaped faces. Again, we're talking about that elongation, soft elongation. The angelic essence has this soft, delicate elongation, whereas the dramatics have this sharp intensity within their vertical. People with ethereal essence also have like a kind of mesmerizing quality about them. You can say it's the vibe they give off, you can say it's in their eyes, but something about them is just captivating. Some imagery that John Kitchener applies to the angelic essence is Art Nouveau, Dave Chihuly, and the angelic essence can be seen in designers like Romeo Gigli, Vera Wang. Here are some celeb examples that John Kitchener has described as having an angelic essence. We see Gwyneth Paltrow, Daryl Hannah, Vanessa Redgrave, Anya Taylor-Joy, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Kate Blanchett. Don't worry, we'll go over more examples in the coming parts. So if you're into the Kibbe system, remember that Kibbe body types and John Kitchener essences are in fact two different systems. Now I do think they can be used in tandem, but they are two different systems. So whereas Tilda Swinton would be a Kibbe dramatic, she is actually a perfect example of having an ethereal essence. While she is long and tall and narrow, she has a soft quality about her, a mystical quality about her, otherworldly. And she looks amazing in soft, long, draped gowns, which is a very ethereal trait. The soft draped gown is ethereal 101. And another example would be Kate Blanchett. In the Kibbe system, again, she's a dramatic because she's all sharp angles. However, she does have an otherworldly quality to her. You can see it in her eyes and her softness. And she looks so amazing in this gown. The sharpness of the suit seems to overwhelm her a little bit. 
We see a lot of actresses who play mermaids or goddesses or fairies in movies. They often have angelic essence in their blend. Similarly, a lot of high fashion models have angelic or ethereal essence in their blend because that otherworldly, mystical, captivating energy is so sought after in the fashion industry. Another signature element of the angelic essence is moderate to low contrast. So the dramatics have this severe contrast between their eyes and their skin and their hair, and they have these contoured features that feel sharp and intense. The faded quality about their coloring, very soft, Again, very delicate. The energy is not intense. Ethereal essences, while they have mesmerizing eyes, the contrast between their hair, face, and eyes is much softer, much more delicate. There's a gentle flow between the coloring and the ethereal essence versus the contrast in the dramatic essence. Let's go over the style guidelines for the angelic essence and how to actually wear it out into the real world. Please note, just because you have the following pieces in your wardrobe or you like to wear them does not necessarily mean you have this essence. Your essence is not just your style. In fact, it is more of an aesthetic vibe that you give off or your facial features that communicate a certain essence to the world. So if we saw a photo of just your face with a natural expression, no clothes, we, would, we should still be able to see the ethereal essence in you. Okay, so let's get into how we are dressing the angelic essence. The first one, the soft draped gown. It should feel like it's floating. I don't know where you're going to wear this. I hope you have a lot of galas to intend. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We will go over how to casually dress for the angelic essence as well. But the soft draped gown, it's an angelic essence staple. So here we see someone like Anya Taylor-Joy in a beautiful, soft, floating, draped gown. She looks so harmonious. She definitely has angelic essence within her blend versus someone like JLo. Now JLo still looks beautiful in this dress, but she probably leans a little bit more dramatic and romantic in her essence blend, which is why when we see her in a super soft floating gown, it feels a little bit more like a costume. It still looks beautiful, but not quite as in sync as it does on Anya. And here we have Katherine Heigl, who has a classic essence wearing a soft draped gown, and the gown just seems to be wearing her. It is not mesmerizing. Versus Lupita Nyong'o, who has an ingenue ethereal essence, in my opinion. She looks mesmerizing in soft draped gowns. Every time on the red carpet when she wears one of these, she looks stunning. So the soft draped gown that looks like it's floating is an absolute angelic staple, but you can also take the qualities of these dresses and translate them into more regular day clothes or casual outfits. And we'll go over how to do that, don't worry. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll know that I talk a lot about how important texture and weight are to the overall head to toe aesthetic. Now let's go over what the angelic essence needs for texture, weight, and fabrics. We want soft, pliable fabrics, draped fabrics. They have that delicate, soft S shape. So they shouldn't be stiff, they shouldn't be heavy, they shouldn't be overly dramatic. Chiffons, sheer fabrics, even a silk jersey are all great options. We don't want anything too matte or too dull. Iridescent textures can also be very mesmerizing and great for the angelic essence. Remember that mystical cosmos energy we were talking about? Well, turn that into a fabric and it's perfect for the angelic essence. But you also need to pay attention to the weight of the fabric or how heavy it drapes over the body. We want liquid gold. We want something that drapes softly over the body. We want it to visually flow. Something like a patent leather would not work for the ethereal essence. That would be too harsh, too heavy, too dramatic. It would work for the dramatic essence though. So anything with an aggressive heaviness tends to overwhelm your angelic essence. So think about that when you're choosing fabrics. How heavy does this fabric feel? How weighted does it feel? Yes? No. You'll start to train your eye as you go through this process. So we don't want anything too structured or stiff because that will weigh down the mystical energy or the soft, delicate energy we're trying to cultivate with these outfits. So translucent fabrics also work really well. So we have soft organzas, chiffons, soft silks or satins also work well, but those aren't totally daytime. You could also look for a silk jersey. We want featherweight fabrics that are luxurious and fine. Grecian pleating is also a nice option. It's very soft and delicate and not overly structured. 
butterfly sleeves like this work very well. You can do a handkerchief or a lettuce hem as it has a soft, delicate feel to it. So unlike with a romantic essence, your bust and waist and hips may be visible, but we're not emphasizing it. That mature yin is not what we're going for. So the body can be visible or not with the angelic essence, but we want the fabrics to drape softly over the body. The overall lines of a garment are really important and can have a dramatic impact on what it says to the world. So for the angelic essence, we want vertical or diagonal movement. Diagonal is especially effective, so any asymmetrical hems can work really nicely. Again, the draping kind of creates that diagonal movement that we're searching for. Vertical also works. We don't want a lot of horizontal off the body shapes. While you can do some bell sleeves or some puff sleeves like this or Renaissance inspired sleeves, we don't want an overextension of the line that's too dramatic. Something like this would be more appropriate for the dramatic essence. Does this piece look like it could be on a goddess or a fairy? If the answer is yes, great. Does it look like it could be on a villain? probably going in the wrong direction. Fabric and texture are certainly important aspects. You can also play up the print aspect. So abstract prints, ombre textures, soft tie dyes like this, not like this, that have abstract shapes or abstract representations of the print are great. Hyper-realistic or playful prints are not great. Because we have this mystical energy, winged shaped elements can be successful, but we wanna do something like this that has a gentle wing abstract shape, not like this. And in terms of color palette, we wanna keep the colors low to moderate contrast. So for colors, we wanna want them to be reminiscent of dusk or dawn, that soft, low blended contrast. Again, the whole point of this is to find what essence we naturally give off and then match it with our clothes and our style lines. So someone with an ethereal essence wearing super sharp contrasted pieces, that creates juxtaposition. It's a different way to dress, but it's not dressing within your essence blend. So let's talk about the silhouette of your clothing. We want soft flowing draped lines. So if you can't wear a soft draped dress like this, a jacket like this is a good choice. While it has more structure than the dress, it still has soft flowing draped lines. Draped blouses are also great. Palazzo pants, some flares, high-low hemlines, skirts or dresses with godets in them. All of these help create that soft, gentle swing or flowing aspect that we're searching for. Kimono style silhouettes can work, tunics can work, or anything that has a slightly Renaissance style attribute to it. For jewelry and accessories, we want anything mystical, anything light and airy. Anything with a barely there feel also works, as long as it doesn't veer too classic. Raw pearls, crystals, gemstones, anything that looks natural and soft is perfect. Otherworldly antique details can also work. For shoes, we want something delicate and light that doesn't disrupt the overall energy that we've created within an outfit. So barely there shoes work. Anything with antique, delicate details can work. Anything with mystical elements can work. Antique, delicate shoes actually work best, but you can also try ballet flats, even gladiator sandals. Ultimately, when you craft your head to toe outfits, the shoes should not be a heavy focal point within the outfit. So when we have a gladiator pair of sandals like this, they feel strong and powerful and natural and almost warrior-like, whereas something like this would work well for the angelic essence. Now these are both gladiator sandals, but one has a very soft, delicate, barely there feel, and one has a very powerful edge to it. Remember to assess the overall weight and energy that your outfit is bringing. Those daily outfit photos, which I go over in this video, can really help visually train your eye to see the emphasis points of an outfit, to see where it's harmonious with your body or where it might look like a costume or where a focal point of an outfit is slightly off balance or not working for your energy or your essence blend. So creating a head to toe look is crucial for any style. It's putting the finishing touches on it. You create a birthday cake. If it doesn't have any frosting or happy birthday message, the message is lost. The birthday cake no ceases to be a birthday cake. It's just a regular cake. So those details, the hair, the makeup, the accessories are very important in cementing your overall aesthetic goals. And it 
they can be especially crucial with the ethereal essence. The angelic essence is all about soft flowiness, and those draped gowns are not always applicable to your daily lifestyle, but the ethereal makeup, jewelry, hair, shoes can be applied. So let's go over the hairstyles for the ethereal. So they often look really great in long floaty hair that kind of creates a halo shape around their heads. You can see my attempts. So we want wispy, soft, floating hair, gentle curls, longer lengths. These are just some basic ideas to help you get started. They can also look amazing with soft braids because the braid mimics that elongated S shape. Obviously, you're watching this video hoping to find some insight into your style. Now, if you've figured out your Kibi ID and you're like, how the heck do I merge my Kibi ID with my angelic essence? Let's go over some ideas. Let's create an outfit for each of the 10 Kibi IDs that harkens back to their angelic essence. Here we have dramatic. We are keeping the vertical intact. The clothes are narrow to the body, except for this lovely ethereal sleeve. The sleeve is in organza, so it has a touch more structure that the dramatics would do well with. Angular flats that still feel light, and a minimalist meets mystical earrings to match. A lighter palette can do wonders to transform an outfit to a more ethereal aesthetic, so keep that in mind. Soft dramatics, boot cut pants for a more casual look, paired with a draped off the shoulder silk blouse, barely there sandals and a glamorous ethereal earrings. T-shaped and accommodates vertical and curve. I love this loose raw silk set for the flamboyant natural. Paired with a goddess-esque necklace and a simple strap sandal, it's easygoing ethereal and accommodates width and vertical. For the soft natural, you want to accommodate curve and width. This is off the shoulder ethereal blouse is perfect, paired with a pair of mom jeans so the curves can breathe. A simple tie up sandal and some ethereal hair details are the perfect touch. For the dramatic classic, we want some structure and balance. I love this lace blouse. It has a lighter vibe but still has some tailoring to it. A straight leg pair of jeans, barely their sandals, and a unique ear cuff. This look won't overwhelm the classic's balance, and despite the sharper tailoring, it still feels light enough for the angelic essence. Now, ethereals can wear color, so for the soft classic, let's go with this beautiful green silk blouse tucked into a pair of simple jeans and a gold bow heel and minimalist ethereal earrings, accommodating balance and curve and still feeling like a goddess. Flamboyant gamines need those staccato shapes and horizontal breaks, so let's pair this cool lace tank that is light and airy with these light structured shorts, antique mystical flats, and a really cool pair of ethereal magical earrings. For soft means we need to accommodate petite and curve, so let's go with this softly draped one shoulder tank with the gathering up the side and a cute flouncy pair of shorts, barely their sandals, and a mystical headband as the final angelic touch. For theatrical romantics, we want to accommodate double curve and petite, so we want these pants that are cut for curve and emphasize the waist paired with this off the shoulder corset silk top, an antique mule and simple drop earrings. And for the romantics, we will go with a pair of cropped white jeans and this puff sleeve frilly top, teardrop antique earrings, and these pearl sandals. It has the small scale details and still feels otherworldly. So how do you actually make the angelic essence and put it into practice on a day-to-day -day basis with your style when the style suggestions are draped gowns and antique heels? Well, let's go over how to do it. So the goal, in my personal opinion, is not to overly focus on these suggestions but to generally start training your eye to understand how your clothing is working with your unique traits, your body, your face. And are you creating a harmonious relationship between the two or is it too disjointed? So in this case, we want angelic essence. So we want a slightly lighter, mystical, delicate vibe to our overall head to toe look. So we don't need to be, I only can wear draped gowns, I only can wear draped gowns, I only can wear draped gowns but we do need to start analyzing our outfit's head to toe qualities and understand the energy that the outfit is giving and where the focal points are and if there's too much heaviness to the overall outfits. So when we see Kate Blanchett in this beautiful flowing gown, it looks so harmonious on her versus when we see her in a suit. It's not that she looks bad in the suit, it just looks a little bit more disjointed. This seems obvious when we look at her, but we want to be able to turn that skill inward and look at our outfits ourselves, which can be hard to do, which is why, again, I'm gonna say it, those outfit photos photos can be really illuminating because they give you a hindsight perspective on what is and what is not working within a specific outfit. And you can see the trends over a period of time of where your outfits are going and maybe where they stray in terms of your aesthetic style goals. So of course, 
Most people wear jeans. People with angelic essences can wear jeans, but we wanna focus on the overall energy of the outfit, the overall aesthetic from head to toe. We want to shoot for something like this. It still has a light, delicate softness to it. And we don't want something like this, which feels heavy and dramatic and sharp. What does someone with an angelic essence wear during winter or fall or a sports event? Let's build some outfits. These are just examples to inspire you or send you towards the right direction. So for winter, we still want movement and otherworldly, but we will lean more into the winter fairy or snow goddess type concept. I love this draped coat with the asymmetrical hemline, paired with this turtleneck with the slight draped detail and these warm knit pants. Add in some winter snow boots that still kind of have a woodland aspect to them and a great angora balaclava for warmth, you meshed cold temperatures with your otherworldly beauty. Or you could try something like this, jeans with fur trimmed boots, a soft white angora sweater, and either one of these jackets. It's warm and weather appropriate, but still feels soft and snow fairy-esque. For fall, you can keep the angelic essence principles alive with the draped sweater. Anything that has movement, a soft shape, or a gentle hem works very well. And for working out, you can keep your angelic essence alive with a lighter color workout sets, unique lines within the design to add that mystical element you exude, ruched elements like in this third outfit, unique abstract prints, or even holographic textures. So we've gone over so many ideas for the angelic essence. Now. The question is, do you have angelic essence in your blend? So I'm going to link John Kitchener's services below. He is still actively typing people for their essence. Now, as it's been stated previously, he can type you with technically all seven essences, although it's fairly rare. And if you have 5% of an essence, it's really not going to equate very much into your overall head to toe look. So if you're doing a self exploration of your style essences, I think you should start with your three main essences and go from there. And you have to test them, in my opinion, one at a time to really kind of flush out whether this is something that looks harmonious on you or whether it veers a little bit more costume-like, which can be a cool aesthetic, but maybe isn't what we're going for for our true personal style. So the first step would be, we went over all these suggestions and ideas for the angelic essence. Now look into your closet and see which accessories you have that might fit, which tops, what dresses, any pieces in your wardrobe that might fit this general angelic essence description. Make a list of it. Then within the, about the span of a week, slowly start integrating the essence into your daily outfits, ramping up the amount of each essence every single day. And you're going to want to take photos of this because it can really illuminate if you have this essence in any dominance within your blend. We are focusing each week on one essence and then confirming that that essence is a dominant part of our blend and then moving on to a different singular essence. We don't want to do all of the essence we think we have in our blend all at once because the information can get a little muddier. So as you can see, I tried angelic essence to see if it was in my blend. First, I tried adding a vintage ethereal mule and ethereal hair to my casual outfit. Next, I tried a barely there sandal with an ethereal off the shoulder blouse. Then I ramped it up to an ethereal draped dress, barely there sandals, and ethereal hair and makeup. And finally, a full head to toe ethereal look complete with a faux crown. Now the full angelic look is a vibe. It's a vibe because everything within the outfit is harmonizing with each other. So it works in that sense. But does it harmonize with my face? I actually think my face gets a little bit lost with these details. While they're very beautiful on other people, when you see someone with an angelic essence try these elements, they shine. You notice them first. In my examples, I think you tend to notice my hair or the shoes before you notice me, which is why I don't really think I have an angelic essence. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about essence blends. Kitchener believes that you are not just one essence, that we are all kind of combinations of these to varying degrees. Let's get a visual understanding of how certain essences can work together by looking at some celebrity examples. Note in the following section, we are not going to be discussing Kibbe IDs. So if you want to learn more about how Kibbe and essences work together, I suggest you check out this video. Let's take Tilda Swinton, for example. She is a great example of an ethereal dramatic essence blend. While I believe she has a more dominant ethereal essence, she does have some dramatic essence to her blend as well, which is why she can pull off pieces like this and like this. Another example of the dramatic ethereal essence blend would be Eva Green. You can see it here 
and here. She seemingly pulls off sharp and narrow and delicate and soft, which is a really interesting combination. Now, an example of someone who has a primarily angelic and natural blend with maybe a touch of dramatic would be someone like Florence Welsh. You can see that here and here. And another angelic natural blend would be Gigi Hadid. You can see it here and here. Natural essence, lot soft, relaxed, free flowing, but also mystical fairy vibes and looks fantastic in soft flowing gowns. An example of someone who has an angelic classic essence would be Gemma Chan. She has this beautiful balance about her face and this classic essence, but she also has an otherworldly aspect to her face, which is why she probably plays these type of characters so well. An example of an ethereal ingenue would be someone, in my opinion, like Lupita Nyong'o. She has this beautiful girly youthfulness to her, but she's also very captivating, very mesmerizing, almost fairy-like. And she looks so amazing in the angelic essence style suggestions. I also think Taylor Hill could be an example of an ethereal ingenue, which you can see here and here. And I also think that Chrissy Metz is a great example of an ethereal ingenue. You can see that here and here. She has a fairy mystical quality about her face. Her eyes are extremely captivating. An example of an ethereal romantic could be someone like Kat Dennings, who has a soft sensuality about her, but also looks very otherworldly. Pika Patacone is also another example, in my opinion, of an ethereal romantic essence blend. You can see it here and here. And then we have someone like Lisa Bonet, who has a natural, romantic, and ethereal essence blend. Now, the ethereal gamine could be someone like Lucy Liu, Lily Rose Depp, Carl Delvine, or even FKA Twigs. And here are a few more visual examples of people that I believe have ethereal essence. Letitia Thomas, Gal Gadot, Hunter Schaefer, Riley Montana, Zhang Man Wu, Priyanka Chopra, Dakota Fanning, Fan Bingbing, Aaliyah. So I hope this deep dive into the ethereal essence has been super illuminating and has helped you clarify whether or not you have the angelic essence within your blend. Let me know what e essence we should do next. And also let me know if there was anything about the angelic essence that we didn't cover that could be helpful for future videos. I hope you guys are all finding strength through style. Until next time.